Good morning, everybody. You are all welcome to Sunday School. Shall we pray? Mighty and everlasting Father, King of glory, we thank you. We thank you for another opportunity to be at Sunday School this morning. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. We thank you over the children, their parents, the teachers. Glory be to your holy name. Father, we have come this morning to learn at their feet. Come and teach us, O Lord. Teach our hearts. Write your word on the fleshy plate of our heart. Make us good boys and girls. And at the end, O Lord, let us be with you in glory. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You are welcome to Primary Pass class, children. Our lesson this morning is Lesson 4B. Title, A Special Bath. When we say special bath, what do we mean by that? Special, something that is not common. Uncommon bath. And before we go into our text, we would like to read our key verse or memory verse. She brought forth our firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And our text is taken from Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 7. We are going to read our Bible now before we go in further into the lesson. Children, open your Bible to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Two, and this taxing was first made by Serenus, who was governor of Syria. Three, and all went to be taxed, every one, into his own city. Four, and Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because it was from the house and lineage of David. 5. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. 6. And it was that when they were there, the days were accomplished that she was she should be delivered. And seven, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Close your Bible, children, and listen to the lesson. When we say a special bath, what do you understand by the word special? The birth of Jesus was so special. It was the most special birth ever had in the world. And this will now lead us to our lesson for today. A special bath, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was a virgin. And she was told by an angel from heaven that she's going to conceive. A virgin is going to conceive. And the angel also went to Joseph and told Joseph, Mary is conceived of the Holy Ghost that Joseph should take his wife, Mary, to himself. Special. The angel announced the, the, the conception to Mary and Joseph. And also a decree went out from Augustus Caesar 
that they should all go back to their city where they came from to be taxed. Joseph obeyed and took his wife Mary. Also, we children, we should obey our parents, our teachers, and those that are older than us. Joseph obeyed and took his wife Mary, put her on a donkey, and they went on a long journey to Bethlehem. When they got to Bethlehem, Joseph went to look for space for them to lodge in, but there was no room. And the innkeeper gave them a stable. Mary made herself comfortable there. And at midnight, everybody was asleep. Everywhere was quiet. Mary brought forth a firstborn son, wrapped him in a manger, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger. Jesus came, Jesus bathed was in an humble way. Because Jesus is the Son of God. God appointed the time and places where everything should take place. And all this has been prophesied years before Jesus was born in the Old Testament. The birth of Jesus is the greatest event that has ever occurred in the world. God wants us also as children to be humble. Our statement for today's lesson is, Jesus is born. Jesus is born. This is Christmas season. Jesus is born. Children, where? In a manger. But Jesus should also be born in your heart and in my heart. We are going to pray that Jesus should come into our hearts. Jesus should be born in my heart and in your heart so that we will have a happy Christmas. Ages 2 to 5 activities. Circle the eating words in the box and ages six to eight activities. Unscrabble the stars and write out the three words Jesus is born. Our next lesson for next week is Lesson 4D, titled Journey's End. And the memory verse is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verse 10. Thank you, children. God bless you. Happy Christmas! Good morning, children, and welcome to your Sunday school. Our memory verse for this week's lesson is, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. John chapter 1 verse 23. We've got a wonderful lesson which the title is A Witness Without Words. The hero today, as you all know, is John the Baptist. Now, for our lesson today, the text is taken from John chapter 1 verse 15 to 30. But we're only going to read verse 25 to 30. John chapter 1 verse 25 and they asked him and said unto him why baptizest thou then if thou be not the Christ nor Elijah neither that prophet 26 John answered them saying I baptize with water but there standeth one among you whom ye know not 27 he it is who is coming after me is preferred before me who shoe latcheth I am not worthy to unloose. 28. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, 
Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. 30. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he for he was before me. That's the end of our reading. Now, there's a few characteristics about John. John was a special child. You know from our lesson before, he came late to his parents, Zacharias and Elizabeth. And there were specific instructions that John needed to make sure and his parents that they kept. He was a Nazarite. He was supposed to make sure he kept some particular vows. He wasn't supposed to cut his hair. He wasn't supposed to drink wine and he wasn't supposed to touch a dead body. There were other things that were specific about him. He wore camel's hair. He had a leather belt and he lived in the wilderness and he ate some specific food, which was like wild, lo um, wild locusts and wild honey. He lived in the desert, such a kind of strange man. But the key thing he came to do was to point people to Jesus. He was the forerunner. He came before Jesus to point people to him and he told them to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, to open our lesson, I have these two amazing phones. One is a Nokia and one is a Samsung. They're very, very nice phones, but you know what? As much as I try to put them on, they're fully charged, they're not working. They're not serving the purpose for why they were made. For some reason, they're out of um, um, running. It's not running, it's not working. I've charged them, but they look so nice. This is why we must know as Christians that there is a reason why we were created. We were created to glorify God. And one of the ways we glorify God is to make sure we point people tell people about Jesus, be a witness to what God has done for you and tell other people. When we do that, we are fulfilling the purpose for why we were created. And that makes us useful for God. Look at these phones. They're not serving any purpose. They're dead. I've charged them. They're still not working. They're phones, but serve no purpose. I hope and I pray that you will serve the purpose of God in your generation by joining the army of those who tell people and point people to God. Because you know what will happen? You would get many stars in heaven for the souls you have won. Right, remember the wonderful story we had in our lesson, which showed us why it's important to be able to be a good example without saying things. You know, some people say things, but they're not a good example. Now, this guy called Lane, he was a very good example. This guy called Bryson wanted to catch him out. He thought that he wasn't a good Christian, but Lane proved he was a good Christian. And he made Chase feel proud of him because Chase believed he was a Christian, but Brian, or sorry, Bryson tried to catch him out. And what happened? Lane invited them to play basketball at his house. But all of a sudden, they tried to catch him out. What did they do? He told them specifically that their mom told them to only have cookies and milk. But what happened? Bryson asked for the chocolate cake and his mom said no. Bryson tried to pressure him and he said, you know what? Your mom won't know. And then Lane said, I'm a Christian. I can't lie. Even though my mom won't know, I would know. And I can't do that. He was a shining light and he proved to Bryson that it's good to be a Christian and Bryson was won over. You know the reason why Bryson was a bit not unsure at the, at the, at the beginning about Lane's life is because there was a guy called Gavin and Gavin wasn't such a very good Christian. You know why? He kept on picking and preaching at people, making them feel bad for things they did. That's not how to be a Christian. Sometimes the best way to be a Christian is to live the life and people will see your life and they'll be one for Christ. Right. We all know what the papers have to offer. The papers and the current affairs, the news and the media, most of the time, what they have for us is bad news. Look at this one. 
a COVID winter warner telling us that the winter will be full of COVID. Is that going to make you hopeful? No. October. this was last year. They were warning us that October was going to be a lockdown. They even gave it a name, October. Bad news. Look at this one. Hard winter ahead as there's a gas crisis. Bad news. Always, most of the time, the bad news in the media is the most news that is said. But what we need to do is to offer the good news. Tell people things that will make them hopeful. Tell people things that will lead them to Christ. Tell people things that will encourage them. Then and only then are you doing what John did, which was a good witness for Jesus. Right, in our lesson, we had many questions, but the one I really want you to hone on today, because that's the crux of the lesson, is what are the things that would make you an effective witness for Christ? And when I say witness, it means when you tell people about Christ, about what he's done for you, what are the main things? Well, the answer is you must be saved because you can't give what you don't have. But the major thing you really need is not only after being saved to be sanctified, but to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is an essential ingredient. You need that because it's going to give you boldness. You're not going to be shy. You're going to be bold and courageous. And you're going to be able to talk to Jesus and talk about Jesus to any of your friends. It's going to be easier with the baptism. Those are the ingredients. Right. So our statement for the week is, you bet you knew it. I would tell others about Jesus. Let's all make this our mission. Somebody might be in your class or someone you know going through a tough time or they really need God in their lives. Let's all join hands together and pray for that person and tell Jesus about them and God will open a way for us to tell them about Jesus. The summary of the lesson is simple. You probably have known it. Once you're saved, one of the most important things that God wants you to do as a Christian is to make sure you win other people that you know to Christ. That way you're serving God in the highest capacity. This is our activity for the week. It's a witness for Jesus. If you follow the, uh, the arrows correctly, you will find yourself successfully at the end. So try it out. Right, so next week, stay tuned. We're going to have a wonderful lesson. And it says, why can't Christmas last forever? It's going to be a great one. That's the end of our lesson. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the lesson this morning, both for the primary pals and for the answer class. Let the words we have heard this morning remain in our hearts so that we'll be able to live them out and make you happy all the days of our lives. Make us worthy for heaven at the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next week. Bye. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.